Hey guys, it's James Lambden from Analog Shift. Today we're gonna to look at athletes and the watches they wear. Rafael Nadal. Here Rafael is wearing his namesake, the RM2703, which is the latest in a series of ultra lightweight Richard Mill models designed to be worn during a tennis match. You gotta understand, this is kind of a crazy thing. Sports puts, particularly something like tennis, puts a huge amount of centrifugal g-force on a mechanical instrument. These have actually been designed to withstand tens of thousands of G's. This particular one is also created in the sort of orange and red color scheme of his native Spain. Rafael Nadal has been a longtime advocate and partner of Richard Mills, with their partnership going back several models. Richard Mill watches have become incredibly popular since their introduction in 1999. Their architecture, the inner workings of a Richard Mill, which are often exposed, are really unlike anything else. It's been said that Richard Mill shares more in common with production in aerospace and in racing car development than they do with traditional Swiss watchmaking. LeBron James. Audemars Piguet has a huge relationship with the athletic community and basketball is one of them. Here, LeBron is wearing an Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Offshore Chronograph. The Royal Oak was Audemars Piguet's white knight. In 1972, the brand was really becoming dangerous in that it was, it was almost out of business. Bankruptcy was looming and the court's crisis, in other words, those $10 Japanese watches that were keeping better time than the Swiss were right there on the, on the door waiting to crush them. So Audemars Piguet made a Hail Mary and they introduced what became the world's first sport luxury watch, the Royal Oak. The watch LeBron is wearing is part of that story. It's the offshore. It was introduced in 1993 and it can really be credited with kickstarting the oversized watch craze. What he's got on is a, a rose gold one, uh, chronograph. It is, it is just an important piece of the horological landscape that we're all living in today. What we have here is LeBron rocking his LeBron James edition Royal Oak Offshore, which I gotta say I quite like. It has a, a two-tone case and bezel configuration with a white rubberized strap. The bezel of a watch is the piece of metal that surrounds the dial. In short, it's a decorative element, but it can also be used for timing purposes on a instrument watch, a diving watch, or a GMT watch. On the Royal Oak, it is the octagon that surrounds the dial and is ornamental and really gives the, the watch its characteristic shape. This is a very sporty, very cool looking watch that is unmistakably LeBron. Lewis Hamilton, the world champion Formula One driver, is a very well-known watch collector and enthusiast. He's also brand ambassador for IWC. Here, Lewis is wearing an IWC Big Pilot Perpetual Calendar. A perpetual calendar allows the wearer to track day, date, month, and moon phase without ever having to set the watch. It is a masterpiece of mechanical engineering and it fits into this great sort of classic IWC pilot case, which was made popular after the Second World War in which the pilots would actually wear the watch on their thigh. Pilots watches such as the IWC Big Pilot are easily identifiable for their very stark function first looks. They have oversized, highly legible numbers, making ease of reading them, particularly in a cockpit scenario, as easy and as simple as possible. The crowns are oversized, which make them easy to grip while you're wearing gloves in a freezing cockpit. In this instance, Lewis is wearing another Big Pilot perpetual calendar, but this one is done in a ceramic case. That's what the black is. It's actually a ceramic material, which is light and has incredible durability. It's also less prone to scratching than gold or steel. Some of the first brand ambassadors in the luxury industry were athletes. Jack Hoyer, the grandson of the founder of Hoyer and the man who really brought Hoyer into the future in the 1960s, was the first man to employ a racing driver by the name of Joe Siffert to be a brand ambassador for his company. Joe Siffert was an, was an incredibly successful racing driver who had an affection for the watches and Jack gave him the watches and he sold them to his friends. That was the world in the 1960s. So athleticism goes way back. Sports and timing are inextricably linked. So it makes sense that so many of these athletes are watch fanatics, watch collectors and brand ambassadors. 
Roger Federer is a Rolex ambassador, which is a really good thing to be if you want all the best Rolexes. So here Roger is wearing the Rolex Sky Dweller. This is an interesting watch that was recently added to Rolex's catalog. It's actually one of Rolex's most complicated watches to date. It features an annual calendar and second time zone feature. This is a very interesting and very compelling watch for somebody who's interested in a entry point complicated watch, but also wants a Rolex. These are available for under 20,000 if you can find one. Here we have him wearing a Rolex Day Date with an 18 karat case and a green sunburst style with Roman indices. This is a more unusual configuration that you're not likely to spot on the shelf, and it really stands out in a world full of great Day Dates. Russell Westbrook. Here Russell is wearing your classic Rolex Day Date. It's a thing we keep seeing over and over again. And you know what? It never gets old. The Day Date gives you the date, it gives you the day, it tells the time, it looks amazing in every configuration. This is a watch that is just never gonna go out of style. Russell's particular Day Date features a diamond set bezel, which could be factory, but is most likely aftermarket. Customizing your wristwatch is something that's become very popular in the athletic community. Some of these are done at the factory level, whereas others are done by individual artisans, making them aftermarket. Some of them are done very well and others not so much. Here Russell is wearing one of my absolute favorites from the sort of avant-garde nouveau design language that we're seeing come out right now in Switzerland. This is the Bulgari Octo Finissimo. It is an absolutely brilliantly designed ultra-thin automatic that is cased in 18 karat red gold. This watch is so cool. It's this thin and it is just something epic to wear on the wrist with one of the greatest design bracelets I've ever seen. Serena Williams. Serena Williams has a long ongoing relationship with Audemars Piguet. Here she's wearing the automatic 37 millimeter Royal Oak with the frosted gold case. This, despite first appearances, is not a gem set case. This is a watch that has been modified by an artisan at the factory with hours and hours of hand finishing and Florentine finishing to pull up the gold and create this sparkle effect that appears like precious stones, but is in fact just the way the gold is playing with the light. This is one of the best releases in the last few years from Audemars Piguet, and Serena totally knows what she's doing here. Serena won Wimbledon in 2015 wearing this quartz royal oak. This one is a little unusual. Audemars Piguet is not known for making quartz watches, but here's a 37 millimeter, very sporting design. It's got a rubber strap and it has a little gem set on the bezel. One reason to have a quartz watch in the lineup is to have something to play in. And she does swing that racket with some speed. So having a quartz watch that's a little bit more durable for use on the quartz makes a certain amount of sense. This particular model was actually customized for Serena. It has the crown on the other side of the case so that it wouldn't dig into her arm while playing. And this is the one that Serena has become absolutely in inextricably linked with. This is the Audemars Piguet Millinery. The Millinery has been around for a, f a little while and it has found new life in its association with Serena Williams. This is a perfect example of a dress watch made to a high standard that it was actually used in an athletic pursuit. And I don't think anyone has ever forgotten that. This particular millinery is a manually wound example, meaning that you have to actually wind it. A lot of the watches we've been talking about here are automatic. Watches that draw their power from the wrist movement. But a manual wind watch is arguably the most connected you can ever be with this horological device. And also allows for precision and connectivity with fewer moving parts, which is good if you're, if you're wearing it on the court. The coolest thing about this millinery is she won the Australian Open in 2017 wearing this on her wrist. And just a sample of Serena's other Audemars Piguet, we've got the 18 karat rose gold midsize Royal Oak, and we have a Royal Oak chronograph. Serena definitely is an AP lady. Rory McIlroy is a pro golfer and is also a member of the uh, Omega ambassadorial team. Here he's wearing a Seamaster Aquaterra, which is sort of their entry level sporting, diving, athletic watch. It is a piece that is incredibly versatile, but you'll most of the time you'll see them on a rubberized strap or possibly nylon for use in the field. Here, Rory's wearing another Aquaterra, but this one has a GMT function. GMT is a, is a terminology, Greenwich Mean Time, uh, that essentially suggests a watch has a secondary time zone. This is particularly useful if you're a world traveler. 
It is a complication that was introduced by Rolex in the 1950s, but since just about every brand has used it. The Aquaterra features all of the same characteristics of that sporty watch and adds the added functionality of the second time zone, allowing you with a quick glance to know the time in two different places. Here Rory is wearing an Omega Speedmaster Dark Side of the Moon. The Omega Speedmaster is of course the legendary watch that accompanied the crew of Apollo 11 to the lunar surface in July of 1969 and is a fact that this watch joined us, mankind, on our greatest achievement. The Speedmaster is an icon, but it has also evolved into all kinds of different categories, as well as featuring an automatic coaxial movement that winds automatically as you wear it, and some cool ceramic casing technology. It's a great looking watch. Tom Brady. Here Tom is wearing the watch that probably needs no introduction if you've ever been a fan of motorsport. This is the Tag Heuer Monaco. The Monaco is a big, square, bold, automatic chronograph watch that was originally introduced in 1969. This watch has an indelible association with the king of cool, Steve McQueen. Sorry, Tom. Steve McQueen. And this watch is the watch that you want to wear if you're a fan of all things cars. The Hoyer Monaco is not a particularly comfortable watch to wear. It's a big, square thing with sharp edges, but it is iconic. It is the square watch. It is the watch that has this absolutely unforgettable appearance and presence on your wrist. And there are not many things like that. Most of us are not performing sports at some serious level or any level at all, but that doesn't mean you can't wear a cool watch while you're doing it. There is some practicality to having something disposable on your wrist if you are gonna go hike a mountain or climb a rock face or go scuba diving or ride a bicycle. I'm a big fan of some entry level, sort of budget conscious mechanical watches for use in sports. Personally, I dive with a Seiko diving watch. It's a few hundred dollars. I can also recommend their chronographs and other brands as well, but you don't have to spend big money to get a great watch.